Good morning, Jackson Tech. Good morning. Man, it is another blessed day that God has allowed us to be a part of. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray for a blessing upon all of you who may be watching via Facebook or by some other means, YouTube. We're proud to have you to join in with us on our Sunday school lesson this morning. And that's as always, let's start out with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, thank you so much for the sunshine. We thank you, dear God, for the rain. We thank you for all the wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We pray that you would look beyond our faults, continue to supply our needs. For we need you every day, every hour, every second. We can of ourselves do nothing but fail. We pray for your blessing upon all the sick and the shut in and comfort the bereaved families all over the world. Yes. We pray for your blessing upon every nation, kindred, people, and tongue upon the face of the earth. And to God, we pray for your blessing upon Jackson Chapel and every church that stands open in your holy name. Bless this Sunday school say again. We pray for your blessing upon our worship service. We ask all of these blessings in the sweet and precious name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. We're still in the Gospel of John. Uh, today's topic is present forever. And our devotional reading will be coming from Psalms 119, 161 through 168. Psalms 119, 161 through 168. Reads as follows. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, and my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great sport. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend <coughs> them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul has kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. May God bless him to the reading of his words for the edification of our souls. Our key verse today. John 14, verse 16, he said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. John 14, 16. Again, as I say, we're still in the book of John, we're still in, dealing with the Word, the agent of creation. Our uh, commentary topic is the word gives peace. The word gives peace. For most of three years, Jesus had been the constant companion of his chosen twelve. They had left everything to follow him. But he was about to leave. What would the sheep do if they were abandoned by their shepherd? John chapter 13 through chapter 17 form one literary or scholarly context. The dialogue 
of the upper room, the night of the Lord's Supper. So from John chapter 13 on through chapter 17, Jesus is having a conversation with his disciples in the upper room. And Jesus is being questioned by several people in that upper room. In chapter 13, it started out with Peter was questioned, had some questions for Jesus. Where are you going? Jesus told him, going somewhere. How come we can't go? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said, I go with you even to death. Jesus said, you going to deny me. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter 14, Thomas had a question for him. Verse 5 and verse 8, Philip had a question for him. And in our lesson today, verse 22, Judas had a question for him, not his character. So Jesus is answering questions. They think again, I don't know you always talk about my mind. You know. They, why? They sit in the upper room and, and pastor when we have a church conference and people have things on their mind, but they won't ask the question. They wait till they get home and get on the mm -hmm. phones and all that stuff. But they mean I, I commend her. Because if it's she gonna ask questions. And she gonna look for an answer. And she don't care. We said, I wish she'd be quiet so we can go home. We can talk for it. And I said, yeah, Robert, I said, Nate English, but then up the room up there, it's been 2,000 some years ago. Hey, Kate, I said, they'd be still up there. They'd be still questioning Jesus. Yeah. Now, where are you going? Then? <laughs> but that's, that's why I commend her. It's because you, you ask questions and we're afraid to say anything. We wait till we get home and get on the phone and do all that stuff. But if it's something you want to know, ask. That's what we should do. So they're in the upper room. And they are asking questions. And Jesus is teaching and explaining stuff to them. He said, in John 14 and 1, which are not in our text today, He said, let not your heart be troubled. The disciples had reason to be troubled. Again, in these 13 through 70, Jesus had just told one of them, one of y'all will be a traitor. I know he had told them. All this coming about in this upper room discussion at the last supper at this meal, one of you is a traitor. Uh, one of you going to deny me. Matter of fact, all of you going to kind of abandon me and all of that. And then he told them that he was going to leave them that night. All of this was legitimately true the disciples. Yet Jesus told them, let not your heart be true. And he told us all this stuff. And he said, Mary, said, don't, don't be true. But I'm, I'm going to leave you. Because after, after the night, they're going to put me on a cross. They're going to put me in a tomb. But I get up. Yeah, all of this. It was there that Jesus told his disciples that no one could come to the Father except through him, John 14 and 6. More stunningly, he declared that he that has seen me has seen the Father. And that's why Philip had a question in 14 and 9. Truly, God was present with his people, but Jesus also had an unpleasant shock for his disciples that night. He was leaving. Just when they were realizing that they had God's presence in their midst, it seemed they was about to lose it. It was in this setting that Jesus promised to send another comforter. Our text picks up at our lesson text at verse 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, I can imagine that they're saying and A.K. I think, I wonder why he lead out with this, if you love me. Maybe they say, we love you, we don't want you to leave us and all that good stuff. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hmm. If you love me, show me that you love me. Hmm. Rob, I thought I would be at films and, and some of those, some people's have abused their parents and never helped them and 
and just did everything and then when you had to film them they running and crying and hang on the casket oh I love you don't raise your name and all that but did you demonstrate Amen. Jesus said if you love me keep my commandments if you love your folks that much why did you do something for them while they was living now they died and now you just fallen all over the place. I, I've been at some places where I was, I wish they could go for one set I shouldn't be there with you. That's, that's just the way I was. Hmm. So, so they were sad. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my command. John 13, 35 said, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for the other. Uh, he, he said, Jackson Chapel, this way the world don't know if y'all are truly my disciple, if y'all love one another. That means Mary, we got to love her out. We got, we got to love him in spite of because the world is watching us. And if we have love for one another, yeah, then we have love for Christ. <coughs> if you love me, he said this, he put that in there because keep in mind he's in the other room. And he's with his disciples and some more people, uh, more disciples. But one of them is already gone out. Who was that? Jesus. That was Judas. Now Judas was among them, but he said, if you love me, you would be obedient. You would obey me. Judas was out trying to make some money. He's been to betray him, and he's gone. So he said, you love me, keep my command. Uh, Jeff, if you love me, don't shoot me. Okay. What are you laughing for? <laughs> First John 2, 3 said, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do you want to know if you really love Jesus? Yeah, I mean, you need to know that. If you really love him, you will keep his commandments. You will do what he asks you to do. Hereby do we know that we love him if we keep his commandments. He, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. And hereby know we that we are in him. And here's verse 6 is what tells us this. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. If you say you love Christ, then you ought to walk as Christ walked. You ought to love as he loved. You ought to keep his commandments. And I'm going to show up in love. When we say keep his commandments, we get afraid of that. Ain't nobody can keep it. All he's talking about is you got to love God with all your heart. And you got to love your neighbor as yourself. Two things, Jeff, when we talk about keep the commandment, love God and love everybody else. On these hangs the whole law. Right. We say, well, we can't do it. Nobody, yeah, yeah, you can. You can't do it yourself. But then later on this lesson, he said, I'm going to send you something. I'm going to send you somebody that's going to be able to help you. <clears throat> so Mary, that boy, said, I love you. Don't just take the words. I ought to demonstrate it some kind of way. You know, we, 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 we throw that word around loosely. I did when I was coming up. You know, you throw that around. Y'all okay? we, 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 wouldn't we want to hear that. We'll throw it out in a minute. If we can get what we want. Yeah. But love should be demonstrated. If you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. That's what he said. And Verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He says, I know y'all are sad, and I'm fixing to leave you, and I know you don't want me to leave, but if you love me, after I'm gone, just keep my commandment. Demonstrate that you love me. And I'm going to pray the Father. And I know when I pray to the Father, He hears me. Because I know He's going to give me anything I ask, but I'm going to pray to the Father, and, and He's going to give you another comforter. Now, another comforter, it said, 
The term another translated that means another of the same kind. I, I'm, I'm your comforter, but I got to go away. God will give you another comforter, another of the same kind. It says some say that the Spirit has been called the other Jesus, which it technically is. I'm going to pray to the Father, and He's going to give you another comforter, another helper, another counselor, another strengthener, another intercessor, another advocate. All of these, we're talking about the same thing. He's going to give you another comforter. And that he may abide with you forever. Jesus said, I came. I've done my mission. About to do. I will complete it when I get about the grave. But this is his last night here. And he said, I've done what I was required to do. I'm going back to the Father. But he's going to send you another comforter. All right? The difference is, this one would never leave you. He's going to be with you forever. All right? It said in the old covenant, the Spirit of God would come upon peoples to perform a certain task, and then they will leave. But on, when this Spirit comes upon you, it will be forever. It won't leave you. He said, I'll never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. I'm going to abide with you. I will tabernacle with you. Saying, God's going to prepare a place for you. He, he, he said, as you to turn mansions. So this is the same term here as a boat. Uh, he's going to dwell in you, with you, through you. You are his mansion because he's going to live in you. But he's going to prepare a place for you. Ah. Notice the Holy Spirit is with us. Verse 16, he said, the comforter, he shall abide with you. All right. But he also shall abide by us and within us. His job is to manifest the life of Jesus in believers. He will stay with them until the end of the ages. Matthew 28 and 20 said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So he will never leave us. <clears throat> this one that he's come sending back. Jesus is still in the upper room. He's still talking to these 12. He's telling them, I got to go away, but I'm going to tell them, I ask the Father, and the Father will send you comfort, and He's going to be with you forever. And they didn't say, where are you going, Jesus? You don't explain that to me. <laughs> Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. He's going to send you another comfort, one of the same kind. And here he calls it the spirit of truth. Okay, why? Let me let me get my let me get my Donald Trump singing off the <laughs> the spirit of truth, Bertha. Oh, and and he 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 he's gonna send the spirit of truth, but the world cannot receive it. It's the spirit of truth, Mary. That's the opposite of lies. And it's the spirit of truth, and we got people that's banking on a lie. That's supporting lies. Now, if, if you are supporting lies and you are telling lies and you are banking your career on lies, then I don't think the spirit of truth is in you. I mean, well, he said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. If you love me, he said, keep my commandments. And, and if you're not keeping his commandment, you don't love him, that means you can't even see him. And Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he's old? He said, Nicodemus won't die again. He said, he must be born again. How can that be? Well, you can't see unless you're born again. 
And so the spirit of truth is not in you. I don't put any person who is not saved is capable of doing anything. When a man goes off into a school and shoot up all these little children, we say, I don't understand that. If you don't have the spirit of truth, the spirit of God in you, you are capable of doing anything. But I'm going to send you another comfort. It's the spirit of truth. You know, whom the world cannot receive. The world can't receive. And why can't the world receive? We start out in the first chapter of John. Uh, Jesus came to his own, his own receiving not. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Jesus was a light that shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. They rejected the light. And if you rejected the light, then you can't see. You are in darkness, and you stone. And so they refused the light, so the world cannot receive him, because it seeth him not. They can't see him. They don't understand who he is, because they have refused to accept the word. What this whole thing is about. The light. The truth. Here is the spirit. The truth. 1 Corinthians 2.14 said, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. For the natural man can't see. And we think, a lot of things, I'll our leaders in Congress think that they, they're playing those games, all right, when I'm talking about lives and stuff, all right, they're playing those games and it's all a political movements and they're trying to sway people. And, but, but when you're playing around with a lie, and some of them use Christianity and, you know, and you're playing around with a lie, you really don't see where you are creating that much harm. They, don't, they just think, well, it's just this is all in politics. God don't see it that way. Right? If you, you are lying and supporting a lie, God, he don't see it that way. The spirit of truth is not in you. I'll leave that alone. Okay. 17b. But you know him. Now the world doesn't know him. And they can't receive the spirit of truth. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. You know him. You, he, he, well, for those 11 disciples, the Holy Spirit was already with them and would later be in them. This was fulfilled when Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit when they were regenerated and born again. Hmm. In addition to, I said that, the Spirit will be with them, and then it's going to be in them. It's that in addition to with and in, Jesus used a third preposition to describe the relationship of the disciples. In Acts 1 and 8, he said, You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So it's going to be with you, it's going to be in you, and it will be upon you. You. And they said, and that's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but he used all of these words, these prepositions to describe the Holy Spirit. So we know that we're in him because we love one another. If you want to know where you stand with God, then check yourself out how you stand with other people. Yeah. You know, do you really love as he said? Love. For he dwells in you. Okay. Now, verse 18. I should have phrased this stuff so I could get some questions there. <laughs> I will not be you. I'm going away. He's not already told him I'm going away. <coughs> but I'm coming back. And so they were just so sad. And I would have been sad too. You know, they, they walked around and 
But he says, but I, I won't leave you comfortless. That word also translated fatherless. It's also translated orphans. I won't leave you orphan. I'm just not going to abandon you. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Matthew 20, 28, 20, I've already discussed. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's what he said. Again, he already told them that. But they're not fully comprehending everything that he is telling them in the upper room. And that's why it's imperative that the Spirit come. And he said, I will come to you. Now, that's it, the question. He said, I will come to you. He said, that could refer to maybe three different things. One, Jesus' second coming. Is that what he's talking about? Number two, the gift of the Holy Spirit and number three, Jesus' resurrection. He said, I will come to you. So which one is he talking about? Well, I'll just say that one really. <laughs> if we keep it in context, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. So when he said, if I'll come to you, that would be the day of Pentecost. But when he got up out of the grave, they saw him saying, that's what he's talking about. Because some of the later verses down here don't talk about that. He come to you. And in, in, in his second visit to earth, he's coming back again. That's a coming to us. So I said, well, it's nothing to argue about. We can take all three of them. You know, I can take all three of them. He said, I will come to you. And he's, he's, he, uh, he's not can't lie. So he's coming. And he said, I'm not going to leave you fatherless. I will come to you. Yeah. So when he got up out of the grave, he showed himself to them. So either one y'all can choose is okay. Mm -hmm. You can choose all of them. First night. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. You see me. Because I live, you shall live <coughs> also. <coughs> Still trying to comfort in the other room. A little while, <clears throat> I told y'all I was going away. And just a little while, the world don't see me no more. Now, it said the very next day, which we call Good Friday, Jesus would be crucified and buried. In just a little while, and the world won't see me no more. But you see, it because I live, you shall also live. But he's saying that when he got about the grave, he showed himself. Now I really didn't pay that a lot of attention why, but he appeared to his disciples. And he appeared to the guy on the road to Emmanuel, Emmaus, and then he appeared at one time to four or five hundred in a group. But they were all believers. He, he, he said, just a little while. The world ain't gonna see me no more. Not in this form. Not as Jesus Christ. They, they won't see me no more. When they crucified him on the cross, the world saw Jesus no more. But but his disciples did. Yeah. You see that? I said, oh, okay. He said, because I live. You shall live also. So that's referring to when I get up out of the grave, you're going to get up too. Yeah. Jot that down. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lived. Just because he lived. He said, if you love me, Obey me. Keep my commandments. If I live, you're going to live also. I'm going to send you a comforter, and he's going to be with you always. He's going to be a strengthener 
I know you're sad, and I know you think I'm abandoning you, but now I'm going to send a comforter, and you're going to be strengthened, and you're going to do great works for me. That's what he's telling me. I said in Bible study, and I'm fussing the pastor after we get on. <laughs> I said, uh, he's, he's, people get a little selfish. They are crying and all of this. They don't want, what I say, they are sad. They don't want Jesus to leave, and I can understand that. But, but he has something better in store. And when we have a, a loved one who is about to leave the scene and we get sad and we when we don't want them to go, sometimes we're a little selfish. And, and I used the example of my dad when he was about to leave the scene. He told me, y'all quit praying for me. I don't stay here. I'm ready to go. You know? And that made it a lot easier for us. But you know, we are selfish, Mary. We don't want to let go. Even if a person is terminally ill, sometimes we still want to cling on. And, but, and not knowing, uh, not accepting the fact that God has something better in store. That's coming back up to uh, maybe jumping ahead. Verse 20. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father. Hmm. Now I'm saying, the world won't see me no more. For light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That, that's in the previous verse. They rejected the light, so the world. Won't see him anymore until he come back with judgment. And we'll see him then. But at that day, you're going to know that I am in the Father, that I am in my Father. And ye and me and I in you. Now, at that day, uh, we just talked about a day up there earlier. Now he said, at that day, remember that? There's three possibilities. Of what is, when is that day? On the day Jesus rose from the dead. He said, at that day, you should know that I am in the Father. Number two, the day when Jesus was glorified. Number three, the day when the Holy Spirit came. He said, which one of those three is he talking about? He said, the strongest case probably could be made for the day of Jesus' resurrection, given the last part of verse 19. He said, because I live, you shall live. But he said, that day, you shall know that I am in the Father. So when he get about the grave, he said, y'all will know then that I am in the Father, that we are human, that we are one. I said also the day of Pentecost could be that day also, because he said, I'm going to pray to the Father that he would send you a comforter. Now, when he showed himself to his disciples, and on the 50th day, the Holy Ghost came, and we get into all that speaking in tongues and stuff. But I, I just take the most simple reason. The simple case is Jesus just proved by that that he is back in heaven, and he's back at the right hand of God the Father. And by this, you ought to know that I'm in him. I promised I will have the Father send you something, so I'm back with my Father, and you are receiving what I promised. And there's evidence of it. Jesus often emphasized the unity of Jesus and the Father. He adds the truth that the Father, as the Father and Jesus are intimately linked, so too Jesus and his followers are intimately linked. At that day, you shall know that I am in the Father that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. It's just, John talks about love and this unity. Always. He tells us, you've seen the Father, you've seen me. If you love me, you love the Father. If you love the Father, you love me. I'm in the Father, and I'm in you. He did this all. Maybe John chapter 17, verse, starting at verse 20. He said, Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. 21 said, That they may, they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that we may believe that thou hast sent me. 
that the world may believe. See, when all this unity takes place, the world will be watched. And they're going to believe the really. God will say Jesus. Verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I give them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect and one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Here we go again. Now I told you I wish about John, all of everything Jesus did, that they may believe that I am the Son of God. He said, and has loved them, and thou hast loved me. Now that just, that's kind of tongue twist the way he said uh, the Father's in me, and I'm in him, and I'm in you, and you in me, and I'm going to be glorified, and you're going to be glorified, because we are you. If you love Jesus, you love God. And Jesus said, if you love me, you love the brother. Love everybody. So, as usual, something jumped on my mind. And I wrote it down. And then I lost it. Y'all remember the, the uh, the big purple dinosaur? The children of Channel Lady when our children were coming up. Marnie, that's it. And he said, I love you, you love me. <laughs> we are a happy family. With a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. And I hope you love me too. That's what Jesus is saying. That's what I already got that from. Ah, he said, I love you. You love me. And I'm in you and you in me. And, yeah, and we are a big, happy family. That's what we're supposed to be. That's what we're supposed to be. God want unity. Jackson Chapel, if we can't love one another here, how are we going to get along to other folks in the community? I think I can't stand a few of them, but I love all of them here. Yeah, I ain't talking about you, Robert. But <laughs> no, but we got to love one another, even in spite of our different personalities and personality traits. We got to love one another. And it's not just using empty words. You must demonstrate that love. Mm. I don't know why Bernie jumped on my mind. I, I had to Google it. <laughs> 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that love me. He just stand on this thing of love. Just love God. Love Jesus. You love God and you love Jesus. And love everybody else. He that has my commandments, he that knows my commandments, he that understands has read my commandments and keep them, he it is that loveth me. Now, James said, What does a proper man, though he say he has faith and has not works? I said, Why I put that there? What does a prophet mean if I know his commandments and don't do them? It, it, it's not profit for me much. What does it profit me if I can quote scriptures but I don't apply them to me in my daily life, in my daily lifestyle? He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. Just because I quote a lot of scriptures don't mean that I love God. It don't mean that. Just because I say I love you, it don't mean that I love you unless it's demonstrated. Love must be demonstrated. <clears throat> and Robert always said, Mr. Robert there, that it's an action word. It must be followed up by action. Okay. We, we try to get married with husband, so I have to I told Larry, don't, don't, don't be listening to all that I love you stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you got to listen to it, but you know, do some, you know, watch, observe, <laughs> see if they, see if it's true. <clears throat> true love 
is to be modeled on the Father's own love for us. Always loyal and committed. That's the model. Must be loyal and committed. The harmonious oneness between the Father and the Son is so profound that to be loved by one is to be loved by the other. The result for the disciples in being loved was that Jesus planned to manifest himself through them or to them. This certainly happened after Jesus' resurrection. Verse 22. Judas said unto him, not his carry, Lord, how is it that thou would manifest thyself to us and not to the world? He said, someone else named Judas. Not the other, because that, the other Judas is already gone out to betray Jesus. So this Judas here, he said, is, is, we believe that this is Thaddeus, also called Thaddeus. He was struggling to understand what Jesus meant by his statement above. Judas wasn't asking how in terms of method or procedure. Rather, he was asking why, which is the sense of how is, how is it that? In other words, he was saying, uh, how is it that you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Or why? Are you going to reveal it to us and not to the world? I don't, how can that be done? For they thought that the Messiah was coming to rule, to take over. And if you do that, the world got to know. You know, they said, all right, yeah, yeah. So they asked the question. I started out, but it started out in chapter 13. They were asking the question. That's what we're supposed to do. He said, well, how is this? Well, Jesus, verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will, he will, and we will come unto him and make our home with him. Now, I, I said, that ain't answering that question, or is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, Y'all help me out. Did, did that answer the question? He said, well, how is it that you're going to manifest yourself to us, but not to the world? Jesus went right back on that love stuff. If you love me, I'm going to be in you, and you're going to be in me, and we're going to be one big happy family, <laughs> and you're going to know me, and I'm going to know you. Yeah, because we are family. But if you don't love me, you're not going to know me because I'm not going to reveal myself to you. So we can, I said again, we can throw that word love around loosely and pretend, but, but we're going to be falling short because God is not revealing himself to us. And I said it again, if we don't have the spirit of truth in us, we are capable of doing anything. When you see a person who has been in church and we think and they come up and well, he done killed his wife and his children. That's because the spirit of truth may not be in him. I don't know. In other words, everybody's on the church road. The spirit of truth is not in all of them. The spirit of God is not in all of them. Uh, we, can, we can easily say that the word. But it's demonstrated by love. Uh, everything is demonstrated by our love for him. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. In answering Judas, Jesus repeated the theme from the previous verse. Jesus would be revealed to and among the disciples through love and obedience and union with the Father and the Son. That's how he reveals himself. So if you don't have Jesus, you don't have light, for he is the light of the world. And if you don't have Jesus, then you don't have the vision because you are, have not been illuminated by the light. So the ask negative thing was, well, you can't see. You can't understand spiritual things. You can go to church and do all that. But until you accept Jesus and obey him, 
you just are stumbling in darkness. I'm beginning to understand our congressmen and them. I understand why they can support a lie with a straight face. Because to them it's just a game. But they're not spiritually discerning what they're doing. Well, the same goes for some of us. We, we, just a game we play. So Jesus wants to know, how is it you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? But, but now when he revealed himself to us, I'm going to go back to Barney. I'm in you, and you in me, and we one big happy family, and I love you, and you love me. What did he say? For the world, so that the world will know that I am he who God said. When they see you loving, in spite of, the world can see that, hey, it must really be something to that Jesus that's what he wants to be. And that's going to come up when he's talking about peace. And the world is going to throw some stuff at you. But if you can still love, God is still giving the world every opportunity to accept him. And the only way the world is going to see him is through us. Jesus gone back to heaven. He sent the Spirit back. It's going to be with you, by you, and in you. And the world can see Jesus through us. That's our job. So if we love one another by this, shall all men know that you are my disciples. It's because you have love one for the other. If you truly love Jesus, you will obey his words. Two things happen <clears throat> when followers do obey the Lord. There are two things that follow. First, the Father will love that person. Second, both the Father and the Son will come to that person and will make their abode with him. Okay. That's what happens when we truly love. Verse 24. He that loveth me not keep not my saying. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. He said, if you love me, I'm going to reveal myself to you. And that love is known by our obedience to him. If you truly love me and keep my commandments, I'm going to reveal myself and the Father to you. You're going to know us. You're going to see us and you're going to know us. But he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sin, and the words which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. If you don't truly love Jesus, you cannot keep his commandments. Hmm. Because of, if, if, if the spirit of truth is not in you, then you can't keep his commandments. He that loved me not. Right. Uh, what, what the two you said, uh, if you love the Lord and if you that right, that's the whole commandment. If you love the Lord mm -hmm. and love everybody else, mm -hmm. that means your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Yeah. On, on these two hang the whole law. So we get into we think about we trying to count off ten of thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not buy false witness. Thou yeah. thou. Well, if you truly love, you won't steal, mm -hmm. you won't kill, you won't lie. Now. Who am I talking about? I said, well, it means that you won't practice doing those things. We, we talk about lying, we got to lay down in the Bible study. You know, I'm talking about all right, so if a man, if man, all of us have told a lie. There ain't no use we getting so holy we think. But, but now, when we have been illuminated and the spirit of truth dwelling in us, we don't practice lying. And, and that's why I, I don't, I, I see our people in the office. They are practicing. I mean, that's it. We, we don't practice lying. You know, if you practice lying and stealing and cheating, if you make it a practice, then the Spirit of God is not in you. I'm just going to put it bluntly. It's, it's not in you. Okay? That's it. That's the whole law. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
on these things to hold long. And if you don't love him, Jesus said, he's a, these words you hear are not mine, but they come from the Father. Now, Jesus put a lot of this stuff in there because who is about to kill him? It's, it's, a, it's the church folks. <laughs> They're the main leaders. It's, it's, a, it's a, the, the, you know, the chief priest and the temple, the people over the temple and the guard, they are just about ready to put him on the cross. And we would think, well, if all people don't, and those people thought they were doing God's thing too. <laughs> but he said, if you, if you love me, you love the Father. If you don't love me, you don't love the Father. But they said, we know God. But no, they didn't. Why? Because the spirit of truth is not in them. Therefore, they can't see. They could not see what they was doing because they have rejected the light. Jesus is the light. Yeah. If you reject the light, you're capable of doing anything. Mm. Okay. I got to finish up. We're about to out time. 25. These things I have spoken to you, being yet present with you. Now, I've spoken many things to you while we're in this upper room. In chapter 13, all the way up, and I'm going to keep talking to you a little bit. We're going to go a little further. He, he said, uh, many things while I was getting with you. He spoke uh, to them. He had instituted the Lord's Supper. He had demonstrated a servant spirit by washing their feet. He had taught them about the coming comforter. While Jesus was yet present with them, he still had more to teach, but their mind was not able to absorb, but only so much. There's a lot more stuff I could tell you, but, but your mind can't handle all of it right now. Right. 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, I, we said a lot of things, and I went over a lot of things. And in three years of this ministry, I've covered a lot of things. But you really can't handle all of that. But you don't understand all of that. But I'm going to send a comforter back. And, 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 and the ministry of this comforter is, is, is what he's going to do. Uh, he, he will teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Hmm. I learned something in this, Brother Rob. Keep in mind, y'all, that they are in the upper room with his disciples, the apostles. All right? And he's going to send a comfort. I'm going to send y'all a comfort back. He is talking about. Technically, he's not talking to us right now. He's talking to those in the upper room. They are sad. He's about to leave. And he said, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. And it's going to teach you some stuff. And it's going to bring back and remember some stuff. Stuff that I've taught you all the way three years back. It's going to bring all this stuff back to you. I'm going gonna, gonna to rush it up a little bit. And, and why it's going to do that, it is the spirit of truth. And because a couple of y'all are sitting here, that, that you're going to have to write the New Testament. And, and, and it's going to be 10, 15, 20 years later. So I'm going to send you back a comforter that you're going to remember this stuff. And if what you don't remember, he's going to bring it back to you. And you're going to record it. And then that's going to be for us. He said, because you are about to establish the church. You're going to complete what I started. So I'm going to illuminate your mind. And you're going to write all of this stuff down. And then some people down there at Jackson Chapel 2,000 years later is going to be reading about it. And then later on, they're going to start in Jerusalem and Judea. And then they're going to spread out. And they're going to carry this word out there. And they're going to lay hands on some folks. And they're going to receive that spirit. And then on down the line, we're going to receive that spirit. But here, right here, this spirit he's talking about is going to come to these 
people's in the upper room. And this is going to be the beginning of the New Testament church. And actually, this is going to be getting all the way back to promise to Abraham. In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And thy seed is going to be so numerous, it's going to be as the sand of the seashore is carried out through this. <clears throat> I know you're sad, but I got to leave you. Verse 27 said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world give, it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I'm going to leave peace with you. Uh, some stuff is about to happen that you're going to need the Holy Spirit. You're going to need something. But I'm going to leave my peace with you. Peace. <clears throat> it says it's used in the objective sense in the restaurant. The restoration with God in the subjective sense, a feeling of security or stability amidst difficult circumstances. Don't let your heart be troubled. This at peace was a common grief when in ancient Jewish time. They would say, Shalom, peace. It was a hello. It was also a goodbye. When Jesus said, Peace, he said, I'm going to leave. But when he comes back, he's going to tell them, Peace, because I'm back. But I'm not going to give it at the world, give it. See, we, we, we can sit there and say, Hey, Mary, good morning, and all that. And that's just a greeting. I don't think nothing about it. But Jesus said, I ain't going to give it back to the world. I'm going to give you my peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming back, but I'm going to establish peace in your heart. Hmm. I wrote that down somewhere. That's in Isaiah, I think. Yeah. The peace that he will leave them. Philippians 4 and 7 says, He shall keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. I'm going to leave this with you. I'm going to send you back a comforter. I'm going to give you peace. Verse 28, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice. Because I said I go to my father, for my father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, you might believe. He, he told them that they should rejoice. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away. Verse 28, and come again. If you love me, you would rejoice. Notice I told y'all that our parents are suffering and, and we want to cling on to them. And then Jesus said, I'm going away, but you know, if y'all really love me, you ought to rejoice. And, and I thought about it, is that some of our mothers have washed our clothes, Brother Robert, and fixed our food and, and, and did all these things for us. And, and, and then they get sick and we're so selfish, they're hurting, but we want to keep them around. But we want to keep them around so they can keep washing our clothes. <laughs> so Jesus told the disciples that, you know, you ought to rejoice. I came here, I wrapped myself up in human flesh. I'm going to have to suffer on a cross. And I made y'all a promise, but I'm going back to my Father, and all power will be given unto me in heaven and in earth. Shouldn't y'all rejoice for that? But y'all want to keep me here. <laughs> He said, for the Father is greater than I don't leave, leave that alone. He said, the Father is greater than I. That's the last point that we need to cover. What did he mean by that? That's we've been talking about all this unity. Is the Father greater than Jesus? He said that if we look at it in this context, is that just as I just said, Jesus came, was incarnated, wrapped himself in this old flesh. So his mission, he was subordinate to God the Father. God the Father sent him and so he came in and lived as a human and when he got up out of the grave and went back to the Father, then they're back in unity again. So he is not less than the Father. He is one 
with the Father. But when he was walking around here on earth, he was subordinate, subordinate to the Father. You see that? That's why he used the phrase, the Father is greater than I. But when I go back to him, all power is given unto me. And I have to leave that alone. We are out of town. <clears throat> Let us. Let's pray. Father, help us sense the presence of your spirit as he dwells within us. May we draw on his strength to show your son love daily through our obedience. Give us peace in him. It is in his name that we do pray. Amen.